One thing I love about the 70s, it was the time of the ultimate freedom in general aviation of the United States. BD designed its BD-5, Canrand its tiny KR-1, Van Grusven made RV-3 its first successful design, and, of course, Bert Rutan. It's safe to say that he made a revolution in home-building community with his very easy and long easy. It was the time when nearly everyone could build his own plane, and because of such popularity and lack of regulations, designers were free to experiment and innovate. So today, we wind the clock back to these good old days and review one of the coolest looking planes that doesn't skimp on performance and packs quite a few innovative solutions, making it stand out even 50 years later. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in today's video, we review the QAC Quickie Q2. To fully understand the origin of the QAC Quickie Q2, we need to look back at the man who designed this aircraft. The year is 1975, and Burt Rutan had just launched the Very Easy, a high-performance home-built aircraft that broke the under 500kg class distance record in the same year it was introduced and pioneered composite construction in home-built airplanes. Fresh off the record-breaking success of the Very Easy, Rutan was approached by Gene Sheehan and Tom Jewett, co-founders of the Quickie Aircraft Corporation. Gene and Tom had a simple yet revolutionary idea – to design a plane that offered, quote, more flying enjoyment for less money. They envisioned a low-powered, highly efficient kit plane that anyone could buy to experience the joy of flying. And with Rutan on board, the construction of what would eventually become the QAC Quickie Q1 began. Initially, Gene and Tom suggested a scaled-down version of the Very Easy, mainly because of its lightweight and ease of construction due to its composite build. However, Rutan decided to take things a step further and opted for a tandem wing configuration. And this wasn't your usual tandem wing. Besides being positioned far apart, the front wing featured landing gear on its tips housed in specially designed wheel pants. But more on that later. For the next two years, Gene, Tom, and Bert continued to refine the design, until by 1977, the drawings for the Quickie Q1 were completed. One year later, in June of 1978, the first Quickie Q1 was finished, tested in flight, and awarded outstanding new design by the Experimental Aircraft Association. The release of the QAC Quickie Q1 proved incredibly beneficial for Gene and Tom, and just two years after its launch, more than 350 kits had been sold. Despite their monumental success, both Gene and Tom still felt that the plane didn't fully embody their original motto of more flying enjoyment for less money. Even during the development of the Q1, they had already been planning a more powerful and efficient two-seater version, the Q2. And just one year after the Q1's release, the designs for the Q2 were finalized. In his own words, Tom Jewett said, We wanted to do the best job we could in creating a two-placer with cross-country capability, an aircraft very economical to build and maintain. We went through a dozen different engines, from little Onans to turbocharged Onans and the big Volkswagens. Building upon the Q1's already winning design, the Q2 was redesigned by Gary Lagar to fit a bigger engine and allow for a two-place side-by-side configuration. In the end, the Q2 had lower drag than even the Very Easy and surpassed it in speed. So, in 1980, QAC finally unveiled the Q2 to the world, with a starting price of just $9,000 for the kit. The plane was an immediate success. Fans loved the higher top speed, better handling, and, best of all, the more powerful engine. The Q2 eventually became one of Quickie's all-time best sellers, and by the time production ended in the mid-1980s, more than 2,000 Q2 kits had been sold. So, let's take a closer look at what made the Q2 so special. For the fuselage, Rutan applied his best practices that had already proven successful on the Very Easy, using a moldless composite build. The Q2's fuselage is essentially foam pieces cut to shape and covered with fiberglass and resin, making it incredibly lightweight. The empty weight is just 490 pounds. But another factor that contributes to its amazing flight characteristics? The wings. Interestingly, Rutan wasn't the first to design this unique combination of two wings. 
As he mentioned, he was inspired by the 1933 Flying Flea, designed by Henry Mignet. However, the design was significantly reworked and improved for the Q2, which features an anhedral forward canard wing and a dihedral rear wing. If you're not familiar with aviation terminology, an anhedral wing angles downward, like an upside-down V. This design is often seen on military fighters because it enhances maneuverability and agility. On the other hand, a dihedral wing angles slightly upward, resembling a shallow V, which helps stabilize the aircraft by naturally correcting any tilting during flight. Combining these two wing types in the Q2 gave it both agility and stability, making it a unique aircraft to fly. Now, about those wheel pants. At first, or even second glance, placing wheels at the end of a plane's wing might seem odd, but in terms of utility, it's a win-win scenario. First, you don't need conventional landing gear, and second, the wheel placement is as aerodynamic as possible, reducing drag and improving overall efficiency. So, at this point, you're probably wondering how this lightweight composite fuselage with two different wing types actually performs. Let's take a look at the specs. As you heard from Tom Jewett's quote, the Q2 didn't come with the Lycoming or Continental engine. The heart of the Q2 is the Revmaster 2100DQ, a Volkswagen air-cooled engine capable of delivering 64 horsepower, burning just about 4 gallons per hour and allowing the sleek bird to max at 160 knots. Your normal cruise speed will be around 120 knots, which is still pretty fast compared to its competition at the time. I'd also like to mention that shortly after the success of the Q2, the Q200 variant was released, which came equipped with a Continental O200. However, it wasn't uncommon to see Q200 with modified automotive engines, such as those from the Subaru XT. But where the Q2 truly shines is in its rate of climb. The Q2 could perform a steady climb of 1,000 feet per minute, likely due to its unique wing configuration combined with the more powerful engine. This was more than twice the climb rate of the Q1, and just slightly less than that of the Very Easy. However, the bigger engine also brought some disadvantages. The Q2 had a range of just 480 nautical miles, which is less than the original Quickie and the Very Easy. So, if this story inspired you to own one, you can of course build it yourself, as the plans will cost you just 30 bucks. Getting all the materials? That's another story. Also, there aren't many for sale. They pop up here and there, and usually are priced below 20 grand. Or even this unfinished project was sold for 9,500. As we wrap up our story of the Quickie Q2, I feel like this plane was designed at the perfect time and received its fair share of attention. While we probably won't see such bold designs or revolutionary projects like those of the 1970s, I still think that today we place much more value on safety and reliability than we did back then. Anyhow, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this unique aircraft in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.